Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. You really should be watching my fun with first name videos. They feature actual me instead of animated me, and they are without a doubt my favourite videos to make for the channel, and a really great community of viewers have built up around them. One of the most popular topics of conversation in the comments section of these videos however is my hair, which is completely understandable, my hair is outstanding. It's something that has somewhat come to define me, however I'm not the only one who thinks that about their hair. The hair on our head is such a defining feature of ourselves for so many of us. Unlike most other physical parts of our body, we're in so much more control of how it looks. We like our hair to reflect who we are as people. We can cut and shape it into many different forms, which we call hairstyles. Over the years, so many different hairstyles have come and gone, while others have remained popular forever. The style of our hair, however, can sometimes be about more than just fashion and trends. Certain hairstyles actually play important roles in certain cultures all across the globe. Regardless Regardless as to why someone has their hair in a certain style, one thing for certain is true across all different styles of hair. They all have names. Unfortunately, however, some of the most popular styles of hair have pretty boring descriptive names. While these aren't the most fun to explain, it would seem odd if I didn't mention these titans of the hair world in a video all about hair. Let's just get a few of these over and done with quickly. Side partings come from the fact that the hair is parted at the side of the scalp. This also explains why center partings has that name too as the hair is parted at the centre of the scalp. This style is similar to curtains too, named because they are reminiscent of the curtains of a window. The flat top has its name as the hair is flat on top, and the short back and sides is when you have the hair short at the back and sides. A mop top is when your hair is messy like a mop on top, and a bowl cut is when it seems your hair has been cut with the help of a bowl. Some people like to put their hair up in little spikes, which is simply called spiked hair. Some other guys like to bleach the tip of their spikes, we call these frosted tips. A bun is when and long hair is put into a ball that looks like a bread bun. This also created the term of man bun for men. This is part of the whole fad of giving traditionally feminine things masculine names so masculine men feel comfortable using them like man bag too. That could be a whole video unto itself however. Like I said, these are all pretty obvious but it would seem strange if some of these were not mentioned. Sometimes animals feature in these descriptive names too. A great example is with the ponytail. This is when long hair is pulled together. In this form it looks rather like the tail of a pony. When when people have two smaller looking ponytails on either side of their head, we use a different animal's name. Pigtails. The actual tails of pigs are well known for being curly. While some pigtail hairstyles are curly like actual pigs tails, that isn't always the case. It seems this term actually originates in the tobacco industry. When tobacco is dried and cured, it curls up, looking somewhat like the tails of pigs. In this form, tobacco was then called pigtails. When people started to fashion their hair like this however, it was kind of revolutionary reminiscent of tobacco and was named after it, as opposed to being named directly after the tails of pigs. While ponies and pigs are the animals most often linked with human hairstyles, there seems to be one other animal tail that has lent its name to a hairstyle, that being the duck tail. Woohoo! Every day they're out there, but sorry, force of habit. This is a type of hair popular in the 1950s, most noticeably with Elvis Presley. This hair has this name because it does look somewhat like the stumpy tail of a duck. Ducktail hair worn by the likes of Elvis has gone by many names, one of the most popular being Quiff. This is a fun little word for this hairstyle and almost has an onomatopoeic vibe to it, if hair could somehow be onomatopoeic. We aren't actually too sure as to where this word comes from, though there are a few ideas. One idea is that it comes from the southern US term of quiff, which means a puff of tobacco smoke, perhaps because people with this hair often smoked. Another idea is that it comes from the French quiff, which simply means hairstyle but goes further back as the name for the chainmail knights wore over their heads. And one other idea is that it comes from the Dutch quiff, meaning crest, as I suppose a lot of quiffs do look somewhat like crests. Today however, it seems that the most universal name for hairstyles such as quiffs and ducktails is pompadour. Any hair pulled away from the forehead and seen as being voluminous at the front can seemingly be called a pompadour. This seems to date back to Madame de Pompadour, the headmistress of King Louis XV of France. She was known for her taste in fashion and style, which included this large hair, so much so that we are still naming this hairstyle after her. However, they're also seems to be sources that claim she actually never had hair like this.
Sticking in the realm of large hair, we have the bouffant. This is large upright hair, usually held together with some sort of styling product. Before being the name of a hairstyle, it was a French adjective. Bouffant is an adjective that describes something that's puffed out. It was first used in reference to dresses. It came initially from a buffer, meaning to puff out. Over time, the word used to describe these puffy dresses came to be the name of this puffy hairstyle. Another kind of puffy hairstyle is the perm. Perms come in a lot of different varieties and styles and I guess could be seen more as the name for the process done to the hair rather than the style itself. A perm is when you apply some sort of process to your hair to make it curly and frizzy. Unlike other curling methods, the aim of a perm is that it stays curly permanently. And it's from that word of permanent as to where we get this style's name from, as perm is simply a shortening of the word permanent. Not all hairstyles, however, are long and extravagant like perms and pompadours. Some people like to keep their hair short and much easier to manage. Terms like buzz cut and skinhead are easy to understand. But an interestingly named short hairstyle is the crew cut. The crew this cut refers to is the crew of a rowing team. I honestly didn't even know that a rowing team were called a crew, so that's a bonus name explain, I suppose. Of course, rowing is a sport heavily linked with high-end universities, and this cut seems to originate with a member of the Yale rowing team in 1927. He supposedly had his hair cut in this style so it didn't blow in his face as he rode. The rest of his crew were so enamoured by this look that they all also cut their hair like this too. This crew's cut went on to name the crew cut. Another somewhat short hairstyle is the bob. Bob is a word with so many meanings. It can be a verb meaning to bounce up and down, as well as being a shortening of the name Robert. In the haircut sense, however, bob simply means short hair. It was originally used for horses' tails who had been cut short and derived from Celtic roots most likely with the Irish word baban, meaning cluster, as bobs look like a cluster of hair. The word was eventually applied to short, bobbed hair. An even shorter hairstyle is the pixie cut. This cut is named after the pixies or folk tales, who are pretty often seen with short, mischievous hair. Hair and hairstyles can vary greatly across different ethnicities and races. Black people, especially those of African descent, tend to have very unique hair only found in their race. This means certain hairstyles have originated because of their different hair. However, these hairstyles can be adopted by non-black people and vice versa. Take cornrows an example, a style of hair believed to originate in Africa. Of course, many African people in the past were sent as slaves to the Caribbean. It was in the Caribbean as to where this style got its name. And this name relates to the style's history as well as its appearance. Many African slaves would have worked among the row of corn in fields or plantations. However, the style itself can also somewhat look like rows of corn in a field too. In the Caribbean, this style is also known as cane rows in relation to a different crop entirely sugarcane. Another hairstyle deeply linked with black people are dreadlocks. Lock is a term that has been used in relation to hair for a very long time. Think of Goldilocks in example. The dread part of this name comes from the word dread, meaning to fear something deeply. I've read a few reasons as to why dread was applied to this style. One idea is that ancient warriors had this hair and it was hoped that would instill dread in their opponents. While another idea is that it was used as a derogatory sense for hair like this as others thought it was unpleasant and it has since since been reclaimed. Though perhaps the most African American hairstyle is the one directly named after them, the Afro. Afro is an adjective form of African. Anything that's African can be referred to as Afro. As this hairstyle is what happens to a lot of black hair when it is grown out, this simple term was applied to it. It has since been shortened to just fro too. Some sources even say that another name for this hairstyle is just the natural, as it's what naturally happens to a lot of black hair. Black people, however, are not the only group of people who have had this hairstyle applied to them. It seems that many Jewish people have thick balls of frizzy hair too. This has created a term of Jufro, a portmanteau of Jews and Afro. Jufros are not the only hairstyle linked to this religion, however. In some Jewish communities, the tradition stands that men should not cut the hair on the sides of their face. This is because this region of the face is considered holy. Many Jewish men simply just don't cut their sideburns in this holy area. However, other Jewish communities like Hasidic Jews don't trim any hair that falls into this area at all. This often results in this longer hair being put into curls. These locks are called payots, as well as also being known as payos. This name comes from the Hebrew pia, meaning corner slash side. This comes from the Hebrew pia, which means corner slash side. This is because these curls are the corner slash side of the wearer's face.
Judaism is not the only religion to have its own hairstyles, however. A tonsure is something done in a variety of religions in which hair is trimmed from the head in devotion to God. Perhaps the most noticeable example of this is with the hair of monks with that infamous bald spot in the middle. This name comes from Latin roots with the Latin tonsura meaning a shearing slash clipping. A specific kind of tonsure is a chon mage. This is the hairstyle worn historically by samurais in Japan. This name relates to its kanji characters. In kanji, the name looks like this. That first character just means chon, and it's believed to be in use as this hairstyle supposedly looks like this character from above. The latter character is the maje part, and that simply means a bun type hairstyle. This hairstyle, of course, birthed the modern top knot too. Another haircut that comes from a unique culture is the mohawk. While linked with punk rockers now, this is a style of Native American origin, specifically with the mohawk people who wore their hair like this too. A proper mohawk traditionally has no hair on the sides, however some keep hair on the sides or just spike it up a bit in the middle. This is a fake kind of mohawk that has been dubbed a faux hawk, a clever play on words, that's for sure. Finally, we have perhaps one of the most infamous hairstyles out there the mullet. The classic business at the front and party at the back hairdo. It seems to have rose to prominence in the 80s and has stayed around in one form or another ever since. Despite being linked with the 80s however, it seems that this name rose to prominence in the 90s with the 1994 Beastie Boys song Mullet Head which links the haircut to a certain lifestyle. This has baffled many people as they assured they had heard the term used in the 80s, yet the earliest reference we have to it as the name of a hairstyle is in the 90s. It seems this dude etymology is just as strange as the style itself. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.